All right. In the races thus far this year, we've had three different winners. Let's consider the starting grid right now as they move on the back stretch. In row one, Jimmy Vassar from CART, the gold car. Randy LaJoy from the NASCAR Bush Grand National Series in the silver car. In row two, Dale Jarrett from NASCAR in the lime number 10. And Ari Leyendijk, a two-time winner here at Indianapolis from the IRL in the bright orange car. In row three, Tom Kendall from Road Racing, the green number eight. And Tony Stewart in the number seven car, it is Violet. Row four, Allinger Jr. from CART. The yellow car, Terry Labonte from Winston Cup in the number five, Hugger Orange. The fifth row, Dale Earnhardt from Winston Cup. The number four, Medium Blue. And Jeff Gordon from the NASCAR Winston Cup Series in the white number three. The last row, Jeff Burton from the Winston Cup Series in the red number two. And Mark Martin in the number one. It's an aqua-colored car. Tony Stewart said he was going to move to the back of the field because he didn't feel he had enough practice time here. Look at that. There are the 12 on the 5 eighths of a mile long main straightaway at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway rolling for the green flag and we're underway. Vassar and LaJoy, the front row. Vassar in the gold car. We're going to find out pretty quick if they can pass because there's some desperate people in the back. We can see that the bottom lane is the preferred line already. LaJoy lost a spot, moved back to third spot, and there's close contact between and Tommy Kendall in the green car. Now watching from Dale Earnhardt's view. Labonte comes by, Gordon on one side, Martin on the other side. And Earnhardt goes to the rear as Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon trying to work their way to the front. That's Mark Martin has moved up four spots already. The distance is just the first lap and a half. Going into turn three and in. Mark Martin right now is in good shape, has worked his way up to about the eighth spot. Here he comes off the corner. Oh, oh up contact. against the wall. Leyendike goes down, takes the inside wall, and tears that car up. Wow. And it looked like Burton had some pretty heavy left side damage. So coming off at turn four, right at the head of the pit area, yellow comes on, yellow doesn't count. Look at Burton's car. This could mean the end of his day. And I'm not sure that Jeff Gordon didn't have some damage to his car. Stop the run while they get the track clean. Here it is, Benny. Ever see Lion Dock in the orange car as he comes off the corner. And we see the green car. I think that was Kendall that went up and slapped the wall. I tell you what, we tested that new wall, didn't we? Sure did. That thing worked there. That's an attenuated barrier. There we see Kendall goes up and smacks the wall. And when he smacks that wall, he comes down and hits the line die car. And he goes down and smashes in that inside wall. And Tony Stewart came right through the debris there was after the, the accident. There's Kendall. He catches Lion Dyke. Boy, there's a lot of damage on Ari Lion Dyke's car, but I think that barrier on the inside did help the accident substantially. Look at this. Now we'll watch the white car. Watch. I see Lion Dyke spin down. I knew he, I knew he was probably coming back across to start checking up. He came across in front of somebody, and I, I jammed the brakes on his flat spot of the tires, but I run over something to him, busted one of them, so just was trying to miss it. I hope Harry's not hurt. Well, Dale Earnhardt will be allowed to change these four tires because they were flat spotted. There will not be a penalty. Do you want to see just how flat spotted he these tires were? so hard were? that he was coming back across the track, and uh, only thing I could do to, I thought he was going to come back across, and the only way I could miss him was to just, you know, run wide open and run into, there was stuff all over the track. I knew I was going to run into him. I knew I was going to run into the car in front of me, but I didn't want to hit him. And uh, so it tore my car all to pieces, but I, I, wasn't gonna, I didn't want to hit him. He hit hard enough, and his car was tore up pretty bad, so I wanted to make sure I didn't hit him. Back at Indianapolis, Mark Martin makes his move on Jimmy Vassar as they flash across the stripe. At the end of the 37th lap, Mark Martin, now Al Unger Jr. comes inside of Vassar. This is exactly what Benny predicted. They've been waiting for the moment when they could make the move, and when they made it, they both made it together. Exactly. Now, can Al Unger Jr. catch Mark Martin? You know, Mark Martin, today, if the, we had a race winner and a champion, there would be two cars in victory lane. 
Mark Martin doesn't want to share that limelight with anyone. One car today in victory lane, the winner of the race and the winner of the 1998 Iron Championship. You know, that is cool, because I was thinking we could see history in that regard. There have been two cars in victory lane at Indianapolis. Mark Martin's just about to ruin that for us. He's going to win not only the championship, but the fourth and final round of the International Race of Champions and the first run ever at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The IROC at Indy. The crowd's been waiting for it. They've been pumped up about it. It's been a great crowd here today. And Mark Martin makes history in a history-making run at Indianapolis as he takes his fourth IROC championship and three in a row. His eighth IROC event win. And he moves into second place on the all-time list behind second place Allinger Jr.